Welcome back to the Bitcoin series here on my channel. This time we talk about tulips or the tulip mania, which is often compared to Bitcoin, that Bitcoin is still a bubble, but this one is actually so easy to refute that we look at something different later in the video, which is Gartner hype cycles and Bitcoin's actual S-curve adoption. Well, it's probably rat poison squared. The tulip was a newly introduced flower and the bulbs had a price surge during the Dutch Golden Age. This led to the tulip mania, which is the first recorded speculative bubble. There are two very obvious differences between the tulip bubble and Bitcoin. First, the tulip bubble took half a year to two years to play out, depending on where you start considering that it might be a bubble, and then it crashed and it never grew back. Bitcoin, on the other hand, is 12 years old and went through several bubbles that bursted. But it always only took a few years for Bitcoin to 10x the previous bubble size. Maybe it's something different. This one time, Bitcoin went from 6 cents all the way to 36 cents, and then it crashed down to 21 cents. And then another time, Bitcoin went from 85 cents all the way to 29 dollars and then it crashed to $3. And then another time, Bitcoin went all the way to $213, and then it crashed all the way to $70. And then another time, Bitcoin went all the way to $1,100, and then it crashed all the way to $239. So the moral of the story is don't buy Bitcoin because you know it's going to crash again. And then another time, Bitcoin went all the way to $20,000 and then it crashed to $3,000. And then another time, Bitcoin went all the way to $40,000 and that's where we kind of are right now with many investors still thinking we are very early in this bubble phase that Bitcoin could still go to 100k, 200k, 300k during this phase of the next cycle. And the second difference between tulips and Bitcoin, tulips and Bitcoin are fundamentally different things that we should subjectively value differently. This Naval tweet says it all. Tulips are not durable, not scarce, not programmable, not fungible, not verifiable, not divisible and hard to transfer. But tell me more about your analogy. If you look at Bitcoin's log chart, it doesn't look like much of a bubble. Instead, it looks like a volatile adoption curve that keeps going upwards. This graphic simplifies Bitcoin's growth over time. Overall, Bitcoin follows an S-curve adoption like other technologies. This adoption curve is neither linear nor steady in any way. It's volatile with each major step being a Gartner hype cycle. The Gartner hype cycle shows in a way how a bubble works. Expectations are rising to the maximum and then fall again. From there, they grow higher again, plateau for a while before starting the next cycle. Bitcoin went to five or so of these cycles. The first two were driven by cypherpunks and computer scientists. The next one in 2013 were very early retail and institutional investors. The 2017 bubble was mostly driven by retail, while the current 2020 and 21 growth is more driven by institutions like hedge funds and companies like MicroStrategy. The next cycle, which if the length of the cycle stays the same, would be around 2025. It's not completely unlikely that nation states and central banks are next. The entrance of the first state to officially add bitcoins to their reserves will likely trigger a stampede for others to do so. The states that are the earliest in adopting bitcoin would see the largest benefit to their balance sheets if bitcoin ultimately became a global reserve currency. We also talked a little bit about this in my last video where I talked about governments and bitcoin. From a game-theoretical prisoner's dilemma point of view, the only winning move is to play. So what's the conclusion to all of this? Bitcoin is going through an S-curve adoption and is still in its early stages. There were many bubbles in the past, but after they bursted, they grew even bigger. Overall, you can't talk about Bitcoin being a bubble. It can momentarily be in a bubble-like area, but the asset itself is simply going through cycles of growing adoption. Bitcoin, like all market-based monetary goods, displays a monetary premium. The monetary premium is what gives rise to the common criticism that Bitcoin is a bubble. However, all monetary goods display a monetary premium. Indeed, it is this premium, the excess over the use-demand price, that is the defining characteristic of all monies. 
In other words, money is always and everywhere a bubble. Paradoxically, a monetary good is both a bubble and may be undervalued if it's in the early stages of its adoption for use as money. That's it for this video, hope you enjoyed it and hopefully also learned something. In the next one I will probably talk about scaling Bitcoin with the different ideas that are currently floating around, that are the Lightning Network, Wrap BTC as an ERC20 token and hard forks like Bitcoin Cash that want to solve the scaling as well. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and I see you next time.